Episode 42 of the Geek Week in Review, and this week we are all about Moon Knight. The Geek Week in Review. Hello and welcome back to the Geek Week in Review with me, Jacob's Toys, and of course the wonderful one and only Super Sorrel. Uh, we're missing Ryan Speaks Geek this week, but <laughs> me and Sorrel are going to keep keep going. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, then please do like, share, subscribe, all of those things. Uh, check the description below for the gents' details and give them a follow. And if you're one of our podcast pod, <laughs> podcast <laughs> listeners, um, please do continue to share and download and all those things. We do appreciate you guys over on the podcast. Um, and if you are on Instagram or Facebook, then you can follow the Geek Week in review over on those platforms as well. Mr. Sorrel, how's your week been? Good? Really good. As we were chatting about just before we came on tonight, I've just literally got back from Doncaster Comic Con. I am beyond belief. <laughs> but uh, I really good day. Really awesome. good day. It's been a crazy weekend for cons. You know that? It's been a crazy weekend. Mm. There's so a lot it, it going was, on. Yeah, so like, it was Echo Live this weekend on Saturday. Yep. So a lot of the dealers that were that were like in Birmingham have then gone up, have like come a bit further north to do Doncaster in the same weekend. Mm. So they all slept over last night. So there were a lot of new faces at Comic Con this morning. A lot of Star Wars stalls, because obviously because of Echo Base. So it was a it was a it was like Echo Base Part Two today at Doncaster. It was brilliant. Amazing. And, um, yeah, they had some great Star Wars cosplayers, and Femi Taylor was there, which I've been dying to meet Femi for years. So I finally got to meet Femi Taylor and I'm a photo taking with her and have an autograph. So I'm well happy. <laughs> That's brilliant, though. That is brilliant. When you sent it over, I was like, oh, nice. nice. You look like a little boy. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, so excited. So ridiculous. Like, <laughs> like, you could tell that you're genuine. What was, what was she like? Was she nice to talk really to? Really nice to talk yeah. to. Yeah, she was lovely. Um, you know, because like, you, you get these people that go to con. This is not a knock on anyone. I, I would do it too. I don't know. But you get these people that are like, I was the stormtrooper left from the third from the right on that scene. And you're like, you're an extra, though, aren't you? Let's be honest. Yeah. yeah, you, yeah. Get, look, you get a lot of that at Comic Cons. But um, especially Star Wars. But obviously to see Femi Taylor, that's someone who like I remember from my childhood from Return of the Jedi. That's like she's a mm. proper on-screen character that's memorable. So like yeah. that that's probably my, my, my first kind of decent celebrity meet up north, shall I say? Yeah. And no, she is normally we get stuck with the likes of uh, Sylvester McCoy and all the usual novels. <laughs> it's she's one of them characters as well, like similar to, to Boba Fett in a way that you know at the time wasn't it, you know she was essentially a, a background character wasn't she yeah. but then has become like a real cult kind of i don't want to say icon but you you know what i'm trying to say like a, a a real character as such um it's funny you should mention that actually i went to ipswich con i think it was a, a few months back i might have told you this mm. story and uh my son was just getting into star wars at the time so he was really excited because they had this kind of outside <laughs> area that was was done up for star wars and they had uh mm. um padawan outpost there the lightsaber guys yeah. they had them there and there was this whole kind of Star Wars lightsaber training thing. And it was just brilliant. It, and weirdly enough, this part was like in a barn, but it felt like it was part of Star Wars. It was really odd. Um, and then they had three or four kind of people from the films. And they had um, Snook. It's Snook, isn't it? That's the how you yeah, pronounce Snoke. it. Yeah. So Snook, that's it. They had Snook. <laughs> Snooky. <laughs> they had uh, Snoke. So they had him there. And obviously you can recognize him straight away, even though mm. it's very different. He doesn't look like that in in real life, but you can still see the actor underneath. Mm. Um, so my son was instantly like, "Oh, I know, I know who that is." And then this this older gentleman came up to us, and he was like, "Oh, you like Star Wars?" It's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." That wasn't the accent he had. I can't remember his accent. <laughs> and uh, he was chatting to my son, and he shook his hand and everything. And he was like, "Do you know who you just shook hands with?" And I'm thinking, "I don't know who this guy is. Like, yeah. I feel really bad." <laughs> And he was like, you just shook hands with the first ever light star uh, stormtrooper to walk out on the set. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> what? You, that's genuinely your claim. Like, you know, credit to the guy. But he was like, so he was build, building himself as the uh, like the first stormtrooper that you ever see on film ever. Mm. And, you know, if that's, if, if that's genuine him. And so straight away, without kind of missing a beat, I was like, because he showed my son a picture and I went, do you know that's definitely you? <laughs> He's like, oh, yes, yeah, yeah, I knew which one I was. And I was like, all right. I said, sorry, I just, I wouldn't be able to tell because obviously we were wearing the helmets or whatever. I said, but that's awesome. And my son was like, 
yeah that's that's really cool that's really cool <laughs> it was just and i just thought that's so funny that is so yeah. funny they had, a, they had a girl there today and she was she, she was a little bit but she was like she's like you know in the scene where you see kylo ren for the first time and the red the red beam goes across the sky and he's looking out the window she says i'm the person to his right i'm like oh my God. <laughs> she's got her back to the camera and in shadow <laughs> Shall I tell you my best Star awesome. Wars, uh, my best Star Wars claim to fame is uh, my mum and dad used to know Dave Prowse like back mm. in the day. Um, they used to go to his gym and stuff. Um, and when he was doing the film, he would, he, you know, they told me this story many times about how he would he boast about he was doing this sci-fi film and he was the bad guy and stuff. And obviously, famously, he didn't know that they were going to dub out his voice, did they? Mm. So he read all and he, he did all the lines. It's no, so he did funny. all the lines. Have you seen the YouTube? It's yet? so funny. Yeah. I love, it's it, not threatening at all in a Cornish accent, is it? No, <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> but the funniest thing is, is he told his nearest and dearest and stuff that he was this big bad and everything. And then like, what a mug off though. Can you imagine mm. that? Um, but yeah, so I used to, I like, I knew him at the gym and stuff and he's picked me up and stuff. Obviously I was much, much smaller. Um, but yeah, I was, uh, and he, it was always, uh, always a joke that he had a bit of a soft spot for my mum and like kind of tried to take her out on dates and that so I always say to people like <laughs> Darth Vader could have very nearly been my dad <laughs> let's just let's just put it that way so but um but supposedly he was a great guy like it was around the time that he did all the green cross code man stuff and everything mm -hmm. like that so that was my claim to fame so uh yeah but he was uh yeah I can't, mine I can't was, imagine mine was Toy Fair the other year uh when when Warwick Davis was there doing tenables of all oh, things, and uh, that I would, I would have to have just started talking Star Wars. He looked, looked at me and went, Thank God, because he's been up to talk <laughs> about Tenable the board game all day long. <laughs> and uh, he, he told me that he put, um, because of because of how uh, because of how much it's changed his career and life and stuff, he said he likes talking Star Wars, but he put he's put lyrics to the um, to the Star Wars theme tune in the in the in the style of Star Wars, it made me a fortune, it paid off my mortgage, and bought me a car. <laughs> like that is the funniest thing ever. That has, that has stuck with me now. Every time I hear it, I just hear his voice in my head singing it. It is. He's a funny guy. He was down at one of the shops local to me, actually, like years back. And he was he was mm. one of the kind of signing people who was a the guest there. Um, and I never got a chance to get in there and see him, but he's one in ones that I'd love to meet him because he just seems so genuine, like just yeah. so genuine. But they're it doing is. Willow, aren't they? They're doing a, no, a Willow, Willow on Disney Plus. Mm. Have you seen the trailer with him and the uh, nope. and the new cast? It's really no, it's not a trailer. It's oh it's the one him... that they didn't like. It, it was like it was like in, it was just him as a put like walking around the set or like the the camp or something. Yeah, and he's talking yeah. to all the new cast. I've seen that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I just thought it was hilarious, and I just thought because he was in all the what was what was the Ricky Gervais show he did? Oh, um, Life Shot or something. Yeah, like and yet. he's just he's just so funny like just naturally funny like mm -hmm. and i just thought that willow one was brilliant where they were talking like and who are you like i am like i'm willow <laughs> so but i'm really looking forward to the willow because i loved willow as a kid it was one of my films that i really i don't know i just really got behind it that and legend with tom cruise mm -hmm. do you remember that one yeah um so the fact that's, that they're kind of oh, what go on legend my god that's such a good oh, it's, film though it? it's, it's so awful cheap. it's, it's awful cheap. i've i've gone back and watched it and i was like no this isn't there's certain <laughs> films that i've introduced to my kid things like the princess bride like willow mm -hmm. labyrinth like all those labyrinth. kind of kind of 80s films um and i look i watched legend and i was like oh, i don't think they're gonna like it because even now it's so cheesy but um, <laughs> tim curry is incredible in that absolutely incredible in it um it's all right there's a little well, uh, Whilst we segue in, if we can segue, we can segue nicely into, uh, did you hear the Star Wars news this week, obviously from Kenobi? Um, yes. Whilst we're talking Star Wars, they uh, obviously have put it back to the Friday. I'm really surprised because of I'm not. what that, are you not? I, I don't know. They just made such a big deal out of what that date was. And it was because it was the anniversary <laughs> and everything. I, I don't know. I think it's a shame that it's been dropped back. It's going but... to coincide with the celebration, isn't it? If you look at it. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So so. I, I reckon that they're going to show it off to at, at celebration because celebration's the few days before, if I remember rightly. Um, I'm just pulling up the dates for celebration, uh, but yeah, I believe that celebration falls a few days before, uh, as well as the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, isn't it, or something? Yeah. So it makes sense that they're going to drop it on the Friday. Everyone gets to see it, and people at celebration get it like before the rest of us. Yeah, that something. makes sense. That would make sense. Um, but they're going to show us Wait, two episodes. Two episodes. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's good. I, I, I've i much preferred the shows where they've dropped two episodes. Like they did that with WandaVision, didn't they, originally? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that 
I, I, I tried trying to think how I'd have felt about one division if I didn't have two to watch at the same time because mm. of the, the difference in the show. So, yeah. So I think that giving us two of Kenobi is going to be good because it's going to give us enough of the, enough of the story to, to kind of really get into it. So I know that earlier in the week we spoke about it, but we've got, I've got to discuss it with you now, right? Quick. Go Cal Kestis, do you think he's going to be in this Kenobi series? I do, I do, and you know what? Your video convinced me. Like I was kind <laughs> of, I was kind of like, okay, yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. And then obviously we talked about it, and then you put your video out that kind of brought all the facts in, and I watched it, and I was like, you know what? Actually, the, the man's speaking a lot of sense. Like it's, it's, it is literally the only chance they've got to use him in yeah. live action, and that makes sense in a like to, to, to interacting with someone as big as Kenobi like Obi-Wan yeah. Kenobi, that he knows is alive from the game. He, like, he had the holocron with the message. He knows who Kenobi is. Yeah. And since 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 that since that video, I've been starting thinking about it. I've even, I've even come up with a stupid story in my head now. I mean, I've got it down to a <laughs> team. And I've, like, if it doesn't Go happen, on. I'm going to cry. Put it so, out. Let's, let's do some. So obviously at the end of the, of the video game, you played the video game, right? Yeah, yeah. Jedi. Like, one of the best video games I've played mm. recently. Like, obviously the game, ends, the game ends with him escaping from Vader. So Vader yes. is aware of Cal Kestis, who's Anakin is also in the Kenobi series. And obviously he's just, um, one of the Inquisitors has just, you know, he's just been killed, not necessarily by Kestis, but it's, she's been killed now. And um, they, they're now going to be hunting Cal. Surely they're going to be hunting him. Then yeah. they, Vader knows he's in the galaxy. I've got a feeling if they, if they do it and they do it right, the story should be that Cal escapes from them, not realizing he's being tailed by the Inquisitors, that's how the Inquisitors find Kenobi in the first place. They're, 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 they're looking for Cal, but they actually come across Kenobi first, and Cal is looking for Kenobi. That would work. He, and well, Cal has got to—he's got to look for other Jedi. Like he's, he's already given up the whole idea of I'm going to find the four sensitive kids. He kind of destroyed the idea. So hmm. the next step surely would be to find Jedi's that are still alive. What was the actual like tagline? Because I remember at the end of the game that he's in his ship, isn't he? And he's got the 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 He's just had the running with Vader and everything, and he's got his little crew around him, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. But what what did they say that they were? So as you say, they they gave up on the four sensitive kids. Did they have a a definitive didn't kind of really have idea? like a definitive where they were headed? It was just kind of ended as like yeah. open, very open. Yeah, that they were just going to continue being together. They didn't want to separate, and they were just going to be friends and continue to whatever their gallic like the path led them next kind of thing. Yeah, no, it, I think it would work very well, and it kind of feeds into. Well, when we were discussing it a few weeks back and I said that I thought that the cameo or the, the big moment would be someone that isn't necessarily, you know, to, to die hard fans, they'll know who this person is and it'll make sense. But to, mm. to casual viewers, it's not going to make or break the story for them. And Cal could do that because if they've not played the games, you're not a die hard fan. You're not necessarily going to know who this guy is. So being introduced in Kenobi, it's this new character. But then for obviously us diehard fans, then it's it's gonna it's gonna tie up. And I think and the it, BD, the BD droid is the biggest, yeah. like the, the biggest physical bit of evidence there. Yeah, because yes, it was a nice little, oh look, it's it's a BD droid, or oh, is it is it BD one? But then when you actually look at it, if there was a bigger picture, you'll look back at that episode of Boba Fett and go, there it is, there's the the hint straight away. So and- Girl Strikes Back pointed out to me in an Instagram message. He has the little limp that he has in the video game. If you watch the 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 Boba Fett thing, he had the little limp in his step, which he has in. Yeah, it's the same sort of like like malfunction with his little like that other little clawed hand he yeah. has that he could use the zip line with. Yeah, it was it's such <coughs> a cool droid as well. It's really cool. One of our favorite droids. I'm not even gonna lie. Oh, it is amazing. But um, the one the the other thing that made sense to me from a story perspective was the whole idea that at this point in time, Kenobi is now. He's lost his Padawan. He's lost his brother. Mm. He's lost his. He's lost that mentor. That kind. He's lost, he's lost that kind of thing. Whereas if he then meets Carl, Carl's lost a master and he's in need of guidance. I know he kind of has that in that girl that he's with, but Kenobi's going to be a totally different level. He's a Jedi master. Yeah. So I mean, for me, it makes this kind of parallel sense that their storyline should mix because they can bring each other out of whatever PTSD crap they're going through because they've both gone through the same sort of thing. They've both, yeah. lost, well, they've both lost lost somebody. The Jedi Order's gone. They've only got one another, technically. I think that yeah. would be a great thing. And then Kenobi sends him off onto whatever he does. And then the Jedi Order Fallen game could be literally what the, the mission that Kenobi set him on. Yeah. 
Well, interestingly, segueing again, did you see the the Ghostbusters game that was released? Yes. The yeah. Yes. So what what I thought was interesting there is that that's clearly a, a continuation directly from the film. Like mm. because obviously you see Winston in his suit talking about Ghostbusters, and it's it's essentially answers the question of what he's going to do next. with yeah, and it's it's a similar kind of setup that you know we see something in the in the television show, and then the game comes out, and without the television show, the game doesn't really make sense, you know. So it, mm-hmm. it's a direct continuation. So they're already doing it on other platforms. That kind of this is the unanswered question in the movie this is your answer if you need it. So yep. it's, it's a very clever way of selling games. And I think that, the, you know, the, the Fallen Order game was incredible, but if you didn't pick it up, you didn't pick it up. Whereas there might be people that watch <laughs> Kenobi, see this kind of hint to a story arc, and then pick up, oh, look, this Cal Kester's character, he's got his own game. Like, so it'd be, an, it'd be a good way of potentially making more sales on the, on the next game that comes out. And there's not been any leaks about what the story is, is has there on the game or no, nothing where yeah, it goes. Well, or... Apparently we're going to learn more at Celebration, which to yeah. me, I think they could get away with telling us that if they did do it, they could make, they could break the internet. If they basically said that Cal is in Kenobi, tune in for Kenobi to see Cal in live action. If they made that announcement at Celebration and it was, yeah. it was Monaghan himself that does the actual announcing, that would break be, the internet. So, that would be incredible. Star Wars fans would go, man, well, surely. That would they've just be. Rele- and they've just released his lightsaber in the parks. That, that, that to me, was another massive hit. Yeah. And they yeah. invited him out to Galaxy's Edge the day I left, which was like, like, Rrr. Oh, really? The day I left, he turns up, and Ahsoka Tano. They're both turned no, up. No, really? They're both, they were both oh. in town. Ashley Eckenstein, and I, I, I don't know his first name, something on the head, they were, yeah. Them two were both in town celebrating their lightsaber releases and celebration and oh, oh I mean. that's insane i've seen the uh, <laughs> the cow lightsaber because there's a few of the um like a few of the like tiktokers and youtubers and stuff that have got uh have, have gone down to galaxy's edge just to pick up the cow lightsaber yeah and and it's a big if you want to make a double lightsaber it's a big piece of kit like it oh, really yeah. is like it's a lot bigger than the kind of the darth maul looking ones and stuff so but it looks brilliant. It looks brilliant. And the detail in the in the broken hilt and everything just looks amazing. And to do the double saber, you're talking over $400 mm. to make it. Oh, that's <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, it is ridiculously expensive. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I hope. I hope. I'm really excited for, for Kenobi. I think I'm more excited for Kenobi than I was for Mando Season 2, for Boba. Like, for, you know, this is, this is a big one. Because I already Again, know where it mm. ends. I know where it the end starts because of the films and I know where it begins because of the films. It's, it's this, this massive puzzle piece that I can't wait to see how they fill it in. I think to people about our age as well, like well, we grew up with the, with, with the sequel, with the, what do I call them? The prequel trilogy. So yeah. I mean, to me, Anakin was like my Luke Skywalker to me, technically. I grew yeah. up with that character. So I'm looking forward to seeing Anakin and Obi-Wan and those familiar characters from my childhood coming back. <laughs> And for them to both be coming back is amazing. It, it has to be a good story. Yeah. Let's be honest. Like you're right. you're not gonna you're not gonna revisit a character that you're so iconically well known for if the story isn't like mm. brilliant. Like I I, don't, I just don't, especially someone like you and McGregor. Like he's not short for work. Like he's he's a popular actor. He can he can get. He's not gonna do this just for a for a paycheck. Like it's gonna be something that he you know that that he believes is good so yeah that that for me the fact that they've got both of them back says to me that it's going to be something something exceptional without a doubt yeah definitely it's yeah i'm looking forward to it i am looking forward to it but no that ghostbuster game does look insane I'm not, <laughs> it's, it just looks like a lot of fun yeah i think it's do you think it's going to be i think it's, i think it's going to be online multiplayer only though by the looks of it oh really well, because it looks like a team-based game. It's like you can either play as the you either play as the ghost or you can play as the busters. So it's like you you and your friends team up against people playing as the ghosts. It seems right. like an online game to me that the way the way the way they're showing it. But I may be wrong. Yeah, but things like Fortnite and that have kind of That's what I mean, made yeah. made the, the online problem. element. Yeah, it's you but know there's always... you and you and four friends teaming up online as the Ghostbusters. Oh, come it'd on, be that'd, that'd be it'd, be, it'd be brilliant. It would be brilliant. So let's have a let's have a chat about Marvel for a minute because obviously it's a big yeah. week for Marvel. Um, episode one of Moon Knight, the the mm. much anticipated Moon Knight. Um, 
Now you know my feelings on Moon Knight. I, I love the character. Um, what did you What did you make of that first episode? I've got to admit, for some, because I know nothing about Moon Knight. I know nothing other than the fact that he used to fight the werewolf. That is all I know. Um, but um, it was nice going into a film, uh, going, sorry, going into the TV series, not what, not knowing anything. So it was all new to me. I enjoyed yeah. just what just watching it, not looking for Easter eggs, not looking for references, not trying to link it to anything else because I don't know what it links to. So I just enjoyed yeah. it for what it was. Yeah, and there was it was refreshing. There wasn't a huge amount of Easter eggs in it, to be fair. There was, there was one that I did technically pick up on, because only because of the, my comic book references, but Go on, that M. was Dupree, the, the French yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Foreign Legion guy, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was in the phone book. Yeah, and that's that's a, a nice little... It's not kind of a, a break the internet, oh, my God, no. Dupree's in the MCU. Like, it's... Uh, oh, right, cool. It's, it's almost like, what's the name's name, being on the buzzers at, in Hawkeye, you know, that just... Yeah. Dropping those little things in. And did you see the QR code thing as well that that reserved that came no. up? So there's a QR code when he's in the museum and he's showing the, yeah. the go around. There's a QR code on the wall. And if you scan it, it gives you a free copy, digital copy of the first issue of Moon Knight. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So but I think they've done that kind of thing <laughs> just because um it you know it, it gives people because Moon Knight isn't necessarily a very well-known character, it gives people that opportunity to do a bit of background reading. Um, what did you make of Ethan Hawke's character? Um, very unusual, cult leaderish, isn't it? Very cool. Again, I don't know any comic book references to what that could be, uh, but yeah. Yeah, he was very good. I, I enjoyed it. What it, it was He's, um, very different. I can't remember his name. I always forget his name. But he he is a character in the comic book. But he's disfigured in the comic book. He's got like a yeah. Uh, from what I've read, most of the people in the thing in the in the program are in the comics in some form or another, but they're under different names and different, kind of change yeah. things around, aren't they? Yeah, he's uh, and obviously, I mean, I'm rubbish with my Egyptian gods, but he he's a big you know follower of um of the the alligator god of death yeah. kind of thing. Um, the way he the... and the way up the soul and yeah. Did you hear yeah. the backlash that he got though? No. So yeah. um yeah, he got some he got. Got um, reviews re- uh, review bombed by um, a particular group. Now I need to be clear. I can't remember what country it is, but there's because I'm not great with my history and I didn't pick up on this at the time. But when he's talking about the things that the goddess could have avoided, when he talks about Hitler and stuff like that, yeah, 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 yeah. he references a point in history and it's very controversial. And because of referencing that, people of that country um, review bombed it on IMDb with one star. So the reviews kind of dropped, which was a shame. Um, but yeah, it was down to that specific that specific reference. So, um, and I can't remember for life of me my history. My history is awful. But I was just I was really shocked because it wasn't something I picked up on. But then I wasn't listening to it because it didn't apply to me. So it wasn't something that I was necessarily going to pick up on. Um, yeah. But I, I liked I liked his character. The fact that the show opened up with him breaking glass and putting in his shoes to, to mm. walk like that, that shows where we are with this. Like it is gonna be like heavy watching. You know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be not not heavy as in hard to watch, but it's it's gonna go hard, you know. Um, and out of all the people that that could have been deemed um, a sinner it was an old lady a sweet old lady which i just thought was like you know you could have picked anyone <laughs> out of that crowd to show as the one that, and you sacrificed this sweet old lady so and, who hadn't and even the, made the decision yet no and that's the that thing isn't the it is they're not even aware that they are sinners and they're being killed for it but yeah it's it's dark um what did you make of the uh like the the personality split personalities I liked it, but they need to change. For me, they need to change Moon Knight's voice because it is very similar. Oh, the, the, the Egyptian spirit, wherever it is, because it yeah. just reminded me of Venom far too much. As soon as he spoke, I was like, "That's Venom." It's very Venom esque, isn't oh, it? Oh, the moron's li- back! You're like, yeah. No, that's Venom I, to me. I liked it more than I liked it in Venom. If that makes sense, like it kind right. of, I, I did enjoy it more. Um, but yeah, sorry, I nothing. Just, Sorry, nothing beats. We will eat Mrs. Chang. That not, no. nothing beats that <laughs> <Yeah>. line for <to> me. <laughs> no, but I I think it's going to be interesting. And the big reveal at the end, I was a bit not disappointed, <laughs> but we had seen that already in the trailers. So yeah. as soon as I saw the kind of setup, I was like, okay, we you know we we know what's coming. 
we know it's coming. I'm glad that they showed it in that first episode. Um, but one thing I have to do go back on and, and reference from an earlier show that we did is that I said about the werewolf that he was beating up, and obviously it wasn't a werewolf, but it was like a dog kind of Anubis, character. It's an Anubis um, sort of creature, isn't it? Like based yeah. on the god Anubis. So I was, I was on, I was on the right line. Stuff. I was on the right line, but it yeah, wasn't yeah. werewolf by night. I was, I was a bit disappointed. I was like, ah, it wasn't werewolf by night. It was just, <laughs> a, just a, a dog creature. Um, it was cool. I, I, I think that the, uh, what do you think is going on with the goldfish? I have no idea. Um, I have no idea about that. That I was just laughing at the Nemo references and stuff. But yeah, no, yeah. it was, it was. I don't know. It's. The whole thing is very weird. The setup of it, you're not sure what's reality and what isn't, what's going on in his head no. and what isn't. What is it could the could there be something where that, that Egyptian god thing is planting memories in his head in the first place? Yeah. It's like um, I've got no idea what's going on, really. The one thing that I will kind of just reference is that a lot of people have talked about how bad his English accent is. Um really? but, yeah, but there I is a reason that for it. Bad. No, but there are, if you listen to it, there are words that he's saying wrong, mm. but he says them wrong on purpose because it's all about the aliases and the, the other personalities. Mm. And essentially, you know, this particular one, this Stephen is obviously British, but he's not really British. He's not no, grown Mark up in American, England. Isn't yeah. 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 So he's, he's not grown up in <laughs> England. So this kind of persona that he's created, he's created based on his own references. So that's why there's, words are wrong so when you actually look at it from that angle it's very well done because it's done wrong on purpose if that makes sense so one thing i have heard as well is because with the uh the like the fan screening and stuff they've seen up to four episodes already yeah there's only six episodes in the whole thing yeah and, and a lot four. of them a lot of them have said without giving any spoilers away because obviously they're under mm. under contract and stuff but by the time you get to episode four things in episode one make more sense so you can kind of go back and re-watch it with a different perspective so that has also kind of given me a <laughs> you know this doesn't make sense but i know it's going to so i, I I'm, I'm happy with that but I, and i think the fish is going to be one of those because obviously yeah. he's got one one fin hasn't he or, or a smaller fin like a nemo fin but he clearly um, went back to the he clearly went back to the pet shop to complain about it but he was doing that as mark or something yeah because he wasn't he wasn't in the Stephen uh sort of personality yeah and i found it funny as well the way that he'd like arranged the date and then no it was like just no idea and that was they go straight in with that don't they like straight mm. in that i'm oh, looking forward to friday uh what <laughs> is <laughs> so straight away i love the mirror scene i love the bit in the bathroom right at the end with the mirrors and yeah. the the moving at different times and i just thought it, it's just a really cool and the and the the monster element of it looks really good as well like the 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 kind of spooky element of it looks mm. really good so i think it's going to be a i think it's going to be a good one um, yeah, the fact that we haven't seen the egyptian correct correct, correct, correct wrong, but the egyptian god was always off screen he was always taller than him so you never yeah. got a shot of his face did he? you just saw the staff and the kind of the sort of torso you and never the, really yeah, saw like, the face did you if i remember I, rightly you saw it maybe see once when he gets on the bus, so he gets off the bus, is that it? Yeah, so he stood on the bus and you see like a clip of it at one point, like the mm. beak almost coming into 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 shot. Uh, do you know where it fits on the timeline? Have you seen that Disney announced where it fits? No. Unsurprisingly, directly after Hawkeye. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is interesting. Disney have announced where it fits. Oh, it's next in line. Okay, that's that, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, it, is. it is what it is. Um, but yeah, Disney you know, have recently announced a, a kind of a timeline order for all of the stuff on their platform, uh, not including obviously the Defenders and stuff like that. But it, there is one out there that fits the Defenders in. But um, but yeah, just kind of put things in perspective because One Division happens at a different, like a different place in comparison mm -hmm. to some of the movies and stuff. So if you if you if you're a real diehard, I need to watch this in kind of chronological order. There is a there is a sheet out there. Did anybody say to you that Moon Knight sounds like you a little bit when he does his English accent? He sounds like me. The, mo the moment I heard him go, <laughs> later skaters, I'm like, that just sounds like you. As soon as he said it, I'm like, that's you. A little you. bit. A you little say later skaters. <laughs> you say it. You've said it before. We've, it. <laughs> we've, hung up the, we've hung up on the chat before with Ryan and stuff, but you've, you actually said later skaters. Later skaters. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll <laughs> happily be uh, you know, an or ego <laughs> Um and then obviously but, Marvel Legends and Marvel Selective released figures as well. 
So yeah, what, was, you, what were you going to say? Just go back say? to Moonlight a sec. Just go back to Moonlight. I was just going to say that whatever he's doing with this whole putting Sam down and putting the thing on the door, it's not working because he's clearly still escaping and just putting that blue strip back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's clearly doing it over. But, but I just, I, I just thought it was a real. I don't know. Like it's going to be real psychological. Like you're going to have mm. to watch it. You're not going to be able to kind of just have it on in the background. You are going to have to watch it. Oh, and just quickly before we do get on to figures as well. Supposedly, it's been announced that an MCU character is going to show up in this series. That's the the hot rumor is that there is an MCU character showing up in this series. I would guess Kit Harrington in the final episode. That yeah, that was my guess. That was my guess. It would it would well, even who, else, be... who else is in London at the time? Kit Harrington yeah. and Blade. It's... You're not going to get like the Winter Soldier just rock up, are you? Or like, you know? unless this is Blade doing it again, like you did with Carrington, unless it's Blade that we just hear the voice again. It's like well, you don't still, we still don't see him. It's another voice of maybe I could help with that, Mark. And that would be it. a really, really good. Um, but like yeah. he's the Nick Fury of this like occult team. Yeah, that would be a really good way of replicating what they've done before. Because if you think back to the beginning of the MCU, one of the things that made it, you know, not taking away how good the films were, but one of the things that made it so exciting for us as viewers were those post-credit scenes. And was well, that, oh, it's, it's this person, that person, yeah. And then even in the Hulk, you know, the Incredible Hulk, where Tony Stark um, showed up, mm. you know, it's that this, this, there was something very special about that at the time. And without kind of, without sounding too much like an old man, there's a huge following of Marvel Cinematic Universe now that didn't experience that as it unfolded. So I think if they were to replicate that or attempt to replicate that in a different way, it would be a very clever move because it could potentially do what it did for us at the time for this new new kind of group of, uh, of, of followers. So I think that Blade Fury actually would be a, would be quite a good one. Mm. Would be quite a good one. Would be a really good way. And I'm sure Oscar Isaac said that there wasn't like a cameo, or there wasn't a like somebody somebody doesn't come on screen or something like that. To, mm. And when I read it, it gave the impression that this was completely standalone. But if the cameo was a voiceover in the same way that it was in the internals. Mm you're ticking both boxes aren't you like yes Definitely. we've got our cameo but technically nobody does show up so <laughs> yeah it's that that would be a really good one that'd be a really good one and it's a, a really good way for them to i'm on a big blade trip at the moment but it, it would be a really good way for them to solidify this new version of blade ahead of any kind of backlash of oh it's not wesley snipes or oh it's not yeah. the original films if he was so well established already that you had to you, kind of you're more excited to see him more than anything yeah you, you, yeah. you, you, you get to the point where we've heard his voice so many times we know he's coming and then when they eventually show him on screen for that first time that'd be that the pop would be amazing that would be brilliant and if he can you imagine if his film involved like moon knight and kit harrington and his film was more like a kind of a midnight suns-esque film that yeah that would be really going good in, going into the going into the occult realms of vengeance and all that kind of stuff Doctor Strange that would, and that would the, be really evil, cool. the evil Doctor Strange because there, there was that Marvel Legends game uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance and they had like a whole mm. section where they went into like Doctor Strange's I don't know what, what it was called it was like it was like hell basically and you had you could te you unlocked like Ghost Rider Blade and you sort of played as those characters with like Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange and you were like doing the occult stuff of Marvel yeah and yeah oh. could, there's so many characters that could introduce doing that you know what you just mentioned ghost rider there because ghost mm. rider supposedly going to be in multiverse of madness mm. but can you imagine if he was at the end of the film and blade's mm. voice came in there and spoke, <laughs> like that would be really cool like oh see now i just want to see a blade nick fury <laughs> team up looking for the blade cameo that's that's now what yeah that's that would be really cool that would be really cool. But yeah, so that we had a handful of figures at least as well. So we, yeah. we saw the Marvel Select first. The Marvel Select came out first. Um, and nice. the standard Marvel Select looked good. You know, the sculpting on Marvel Selects are always really good. They're always, they always look really sharp. Um, and then the inevitable uh, Marvel Legends render came out a day or two later. Um, and I, I was disappointed that it was just a render. Um, but they put a pre-order date to it and it's like mid-April, isn't it? Like April 12th or something like that that you can pre-order this figure. 
but what I found, second, I'll tell it. <laughs> yeah. what I found interesting is that we know that it's going to be part of that Infinity Ultron. Yeah, because he, he announced it, didn't he, um, on Twitter? Yeah, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Said it, didn't he? Um, so we've got both Hawkeyes, we've got the Builder figure, and now we've got Moon Knight. So we've got three figures and a Builder figure that we know are all going to be in the same wave. Yeah, April but 12th. The, uh, Oh, excuse me, but the um, the the three figures have got pre-orders for them like individually, which is mm-hmm. something they haven't done for a wave of figures before, which I find really quite bizarre, and I'm not mm-hmm. quite sure how I feel about it. But then, um, we saw on the Marvel uh, hot hot picks of the week on on um Marvel, we saw like all the Moon Knight merchandise, and there was a. a um a mr knight figure yeah by marvel legends and there's not been any mention about that at all but if you remember back to um wandavision that's how we saw the scarlet witch and the the vision figure we saw them in one of those ensemble merchandise yeah, well, ensemble ones, yeah. so you know they're officially released but they've kind of not mentioned anything about it and even that the detailing on it looks really cool and considering we haven't seen the character yet in the show it was kind of nice to see how they're going about it. It's, um, that that's going to be a very popular figure, I think. The, the Mister Knight. I think even people that aren't a fan of Moon Knight will pick that up just because how it looks. Yeah, it's such it's, a it's such a striking looking figure. Mm. Um, I'll be interested to see how much they do with him in a TV show. Um, mm. But I'm also interested to see where 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 kind of Hasbro go with it. My my theory, if you want it. Is mm-hmm. that we're going to see Mr. Knight in episode two, which is on Wednesday. Okay. And after that, we'll see the kind of official announcement of that figure. And the pre order will go up for the same date, maybe for the Moon Knight figure. And then that'll essentially give us four figures of that wave, leaving us potentially three comic book figures to round the wave off. Yeah, because we're still waiting on Disney Store to drop their Moon Knight stuff too. Uh, there's, mm. Disney Store have not dropped any Moon Knight stuff yet, which is unusual because they normally they normally launch kind of like a bit of a toy line, not a toy line, but like the, the t-shirts and stuff usually appear pretty quick. Yeah, not I wonder whether they, so I wonder where they, they are will? waiting, like saying, "Oh yeah, if they yeah. can release if they can release a t-shirt with Scarlet Witch on it, if they can release a t-shirt with Hawkeye on it, they're gonna yeah. they're gonna do a Moon Knight just in, just just in case it this blows up as the next big thing. Yeah, that's the thing. I... Gotta be because they've they've done so many things where. Where Disney have dropped the ball recently. So, like, you know, like that Encanto film. Mm-hmm. The, that, they, they, hang on, hang on. As a Disney fan, that Encanto film. <laughs> I'm not a big <laughs> fan of Encanto, I'm gonna be honest. Really? But like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so they made the main girl as a doll, and then they made this the 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 more conventional looking beautiful sister, should we say? They made her like the dolls for to like to collect, and every kid on the planet wanted the big strong sister doll, and obviously Bruno. Oh, right. Every kid wanted those characters because they're unusual and the more relatable. So, yeah. like, the Disney didn't make any merchandise for those characters whatsoever, so they properly dropped the ball on it. Wow. And then they did the same thing with Coco. So they they basically said Coco is is the idea is good, but it's a Mexican movie and probably won't do well outside of America. And it blew up over here and really yeah. made millions in Europe. They didn't expect it to. So they had no merchandise for Europe plans, so nothing ever came out for him, kind of except like a few little things, like a plushie and, a, and like a figure set. That was it. Oh wow! And then it was like months later when they got the merch out, and then nobody wanted it because the, 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 they'd already moved on to the next Pixar thing. So yeah, Disney are slowly learning from that. And I've noticed with the Marvel stuff, as soon as the things are out, they're putting not necessarily the figures, but they're putting like the the t-shirts, the mugs, the cups, all the Disney yeah. Star traditional stuff comes out instantly. Well, I wonder because in this, um, like the Marvel, uh, this week in Marvel kind of hot, hot topic, mm. I can't remember what the terminology they use for it, but not the tip of my tongue. But the, the ensemble of pictures was things like t shirts, there was socks, there was travel mm. mugs, there was obviously Marvel Legends figures. So I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of merchandise. I, I think that Moon Knight is going to be the next big one for, for Marvel. I really do. Yeah. I really do. Mainly because as well, and this might sound silly, but it's because the main antagonist is broken. Like he's not perfect at all. Mm. He's he's really broken. And I think that because of that, so many people are going to get behind it. Um, it just makes him more kind of relatable, doesn't it? It makes him more human. 
I think with this as well, you're going to get people you wouldn't normally get well, what you're watching a superhero thing, but with it being more occulty, more more eerie, more creepy, a bit more dark, you might get some mm. horror fans latch onto it and get involved in that because of what it is. Yeah. Especially, like, especially when you thought, start introducing things like Blade. Obviously, Blade has a horror fan following, not a Marvel. Mm. But it does have a Marvel following, but it has a horror fan following as well. Yeah. So you're, you're tapping into different audiences. Yeah. And I, I think that could be a big thing for it. More people probably watch Moon Knight that wouldn't watch Captain America, say. Yeah. What did you make of his costume? It was all right. It was it was what I thought. Well, we, we already saw his costume, didn't we, from the thingy. Uh, like I say, the previews kind of showed it all, but it looked good. For, it was really it was it was how I imagined it was going to look. It was realistic, not comic yeah. book accurate, but it looked good. Yeah, it wasn't far off of comic book accurate though. I didn't think. I mm. thought that I thought they did because you know you look at the comic books, especially like the original ones. He basically is in like a, a white spandex outfit, you know. And, Obviously, I like, it's not I mean, spandex, I like the additions but... of like the, the 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 bandages around the face to make the mummy mm. style appearance. I love that the more Egyptian yeah. look they gave it. So the original comic book was more it had the Egyptian symbolism, but it was just plain white, wasn't it? It was just a white hood yeah. and a white spandex costume. Yeah, and things like the moon, like the moon emblem as well, being kind of tied in by bandages. I thought was really cool as well. Mm -hmm. And from what I can tell, they've added the kind of skirt. The Egyptian looking kind of skirt. skirt I'm not sure piece, there's a yeah, yeah. proper terminology for that. But the yeah, the skirt piece, they've added that to it. And yeah, I just think it looks really cool. I think it's going to be one of those figures that similar to the, the Scarlet Witch figure in the One Division wave, that if people don't get it when it's out, they're gonna regret it. <laughs> because yeah, I can't see it being one that they're gonna revisit and release multiple times, like your Iron Man yeah. and your Wolverines. And I think that if he does show up again in other properties, I think there's going to be a slight variation on how he looks because Moon Knight's had loads of different looks in the, in the comic books and the, in the comic books, he obviously starts off more as a, you know, the Egyptian elements and stuff. And then, then sort of transforms into more of a Batman character where he's using tech and stuff like that. So there's that journey that Moon Knight could go on. And if we are going to get another figure of the character down the line, I'm sure that it will be the kind of Moon Knight 2.0. And I think this white, basic, original kind of look is going to be one that we're not necessarily going to see again anytime soon. If Definitely. I was to, to guess how, how the, figures, the figures work. And I think I've got a relatively qualified opinion on it now because I bought wave after wave after wave. And you can kind of tell which ones are going to be the big, the big thing. Um, not that I've ever bought more than one to sell. I, st I still regret not buying more than one of those retro Spider-Men now that I see how <laughs> mad people are going for them it's just crazy, because man. I can't. I saw one go for nearly £300 on eBay oh, the other day. My God. £300. Like, and if you know anything about Marvel Legends, you know that there will be a re-release at some point. There will be a re-release at some point in a different package with a slightly different costume on. And it's only figures like these Moon Knight figures that are, are, are specific and tied to something. But a character like Spider-Man, you are going to get another Spider-Man figure at some point. £300. That's, that's a Sentinel. Do you know what I mean? Like That's, that's almost Galactus. Like, you know, but... See, I've, I've got things about the Moon Knight as well, which made me laugh. I think this is where our slight age gap is going to show because I'm not sure if you'd remember Yu-Gi-Oh! from being a kid or... I remember was it. Little, I was, was you a little, I was a little moving bit on old. at that point. Yeah. I do remember so, it though. It I think next, to be fair, Pokemon, to be fair. Yeah, to be fair, I think I should have been I should have been moving on. Uh, but <laughs> I, I remember I remember you go. But the thing is that made me laugh about Moon Knight is when when the transformation scene, I couldn't help but uh, I I tried to make a TikTok, but nobody liked it. But uh, I tried to do the thing with the, with the whole because in, in Yu Gi Oh, he does that whole thing. He's got like a uh, the spirit of a pharaoh inside of the little mm. boy Yu Gi. And when he gets in like dangerous situations, he turns into the pharaoh Yu Gi, and he's got the deeper voice. And it was it was just that on that TV show, that bit where he transforms. I could just hear the thing going Yu Gi Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, I got it. I understood it. I saw the video and I understood it. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I totally got it. It got like 10 hits, and I was leaving after about, about a day. It didn't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. No, I was sat there giggling myself, making it going, This is going viral. But nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, though, isn't it? Like, what you can, like, you, you do a video and you just think, This this is gonna, people are gonna like this. 
and then they don't and then you do something (laughs) stupid like a a figure with a fart noise in the background and it just goes mental like it's what i did yesterday where i just literally held a figure up and went and did the anakin voice of i know i should but i want more and i just held up more and more figures as the video went on and that it took five seconds to do and it got five thousand hits within about an hour and i'm like what is going on uh, it's crazy it's crazy that's the one thing about tiktok <laughs> like literally just have so fun random. With it. like the most recent one i did was literally like the owen wilson the wow one and it was like, <laughs> wow. i just i saw the the saw the sound i was like it literally took four seconds to film i was just mm-hmm. like wow 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 wow, wow. <laughs> put it on and like you say a few thousand people like it and stuff and everyone commented on it as well wow <laughs> wow <laughs> I was just like, but that's what I love about TikTok is it can just be like, so you just don't have to put too much thought into it. I do like the silly humor on TikTok like that. Like that, that, that is up my humor street. I love stupid things like that. Yeah. Um, I think little clips like that amuse me. Did you like my uh, my Will Smith Sith one? <laughs> I've been loving the Will Smith stuff this week. I've been loving it. I uh, I can't take credit for that. I did just re-upload it, but I did I did credit the person who who created it. But basically, seeing him as a Sith, and it was just like the the, the clips just like oh no <laughs> it was just like it, brilliant but it, like it's one of the things that has just been remixed and remixed into every like every single property like they put that scene into it's just nuts absolutely nuts how it's blown up um it, people made me laugh it was my brother that said it's hard to think that the uh, the fish from shark tales and the zebra from madagascar are beefing like, when you look at it like that, like, it's just so funny. Like, I'm surprised no one's done that as a as a clip. Yeah. <laughs> Why have they not done that as a clip? Um, so there was a, there was another trailer that kind of dropped as well that we were discussing mm. as well today, um, and it was the the teaser trailer or the announcement trailer for Sam Wilson Captain America. Yes, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. Like it's, it was a lot of reused footage from the TV show. Like there was well, a lot of. As it's only just gone into production, that was bound to happen. It's, they've just remixed some old footage, haven't they? And then thrown a few, yeah. few things at us. But it seems to be that that television series was setting up this film. Yeah. Which is good. At least they didn't waste time in the TV series giving us this dodgy pre-story. They've, they've yeah. like done it in a TV series, got it out of the way. Now the film can just jump straight in at the deep end with US agent and all these new characters and that. And I think that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the the development of the character because I think it also opens up a really um quite a, a powerful opportunity for for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And they're doing it with Iron Man already, with with uh, Riri and Ironheart, um, and they've done it with Sam Wilson and Captain America, and basically kind of re establishing these characters as other people and you know the comic books have been doing it for years years and years and years you know with everyone from you know iron man to spider-man you know that there's somebody else that carries the mantle and i think it's really interesting that they're doing that in the movies now so that they're not tying the character solely to the actor um because you know you look at look at someone like hugh jackman with wolverine he played the character for so long and very well and everyone loved him but it's now got to the stage where everyone's really sort of hesitant about the recasting yeah whereas if he was a character where it would pass on obviously logan wolverine isn't but if it was one of them characters that could pass on people aren't going to make as much of a fuss because it doesn't doesn't taint the character that they know so like steve evans um chris evans steve evans chris evans um <laughs> yeah, chris evans steve rogers and chris evans his version of captain america it doesn't have any effect on the Sam Wilson, Anthony Mackie no. version of the character. So I think oh. it's it's clever, and I'm glad that they're going down that route. They're not just kind of leaving Captain America done and dusted. They're they're actually following the Captain America story, which is is really interesting. And I love the way that he looked. I absolutely loved the way Sam Wilson's Captain America looked in that TV show. Like seeing the the mixture of Falcon and and Captain America suits, and oh, it's just brilliant. Like that last episode where he's flying around and throwing the shield and I was in my element. I know a lot of people <laughs> were on the fence about that TV show, but I think this film's definitely going to be a big one. It, it did what it needed to do that television series, and I like I liked the sort of deeper meanings and roots behind it as well. I liked all that, and yeah. um, the the whole passing of the like 
he's got the shield, but he's not sure if he, if he, uh, if it belongs to him. And I like all that like identity stuff. Mm. And at the time that came out was very powerful as well. And a good, like a, a time that that was relevant, really. It still oh, yeah, is. definitely. It was such a powerful little thing from Marvel. Yeah. That, and I liked it. And like, you think, you think back to that old quote, Stan Lee said that Marvel is always a reflection of outside of your, of outside of your, you know, in, in the real world. Yeah. Marvel will, will always be a reflection of society. And it is, and I like, I like the fact we've got all these characters now fighting over that shield, and not, be, you know, not, not because because they all think they deserve it, or because they they want to just live up to Captain America's ideal. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. There's some, there's yeah. some great. It almost, I think this one's going to be almost like another civil war, to be honest. Mm. I think That'd they're all going to fight over it, and after, I think we we'll probably see we might see Bucky and Thingy fight over it a little bit again. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. And it we can't work be, out. Mm, come. Come. I was saying, could this be a good film to maybe introduce Peggy Carter as well? Potentially, potentially. Well, that's what we're saying. We we couldn't work out who was in that tank at the end. Mm. Definitely wasn't wasn't Boba Fett. Like we've, yeah, he's 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 been in the band for tank enough. But there was someone in there. I don't know who that lady is, but it's not, I was like looking through characters of like who are coming up, and it's not America Chavez. No. And I was trying to look at who it could be, and I don't really don't know. No. There's no. She's the new character, I think, which you don't know about yet. Yeah, potentially. Um, talking about Marvel properties. As soon as, soon as, I, as soon as I saw the thing, I thought, is that Peggy? And she come through to our universe and she's recovering or wherever. But no, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different lady in there. Talking about Marvel and, and America Chavez and stuff, mm. we had a few more kind of teaser trailers and, and television trailers for Doctor Strange showing us a couple of different angles and different scenes and stuff. It's all very similar, but there are a couple of little bits that we see oh, kind of yeah. a powered up Scarlet Witch and stuff. So I'm getting very excited for that. Very, very excited for that. But we still haven't got a trailer for, for Thor. <laughs> Thor Love and Thunder. There's still no trailer. Um, <laughs> when is that due out? It's not long, is it? It's not long at all. I think it was on one <laughs> of the shows that when you were away and I was talking to, to Ryan about it. But the time between, because you know how long it went without a trailer for Spider-Man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear this? Did you hear what I said to Ryan about the time no, span? No, but so for, for, for your sake, if no one else is, mm. I'll repeat it. But, um, the time you, you remember how much of a big build up it was about, oh, we still don't have, um, we still don't have a, a trailer for Spider Man, it's out in this many weeks, mm. etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, the time between the Spider Man trailer drop in and it going in cinemas is a longer period of time between today and Thor Love and Thunder. <laughs> so there's a shorter amount of time between Thor and its release date than there was between Spider-Man and its release date. Wow. And that felt like ages. You know what I mean? That felt like they really dragged it out. But Thor, no one seemed to have kind of batted an eyelid. But it's because of all the hype of obviously the three Spider-Men and everybody mm -hmm. wanted to know what was in the trailer. But I think that the Thor film is going to bring a lot to the table and people are kind of almost, you know, not, not focusing on it enough. Um, we still haven't officially seen the new suits. We've seen them on uh, toys. <laughs> toys, a couple of different toys. I think it's the uh, SH Fig Arts toys. Yeah, SH Fig Arts. And we've had the Titan Heroes and some Legos. Yeah, and then there was a, <coughs> an, or an ornament or something that was released as well by Marvel, and it was Thor in his blue and blue and silver. Um, but yeah, I just think that this film is going to be. It's you know it's, it's, there's a lot to to unpack. There is a lot to unpack. Um, speaking of cameos as well, James Gunn has said that the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special that they're currently putting together, which I think is brilliant, and I hope so much that they just rip on um, the Star Wars Christmas specials and just kind of <laughs> buy into that cheese. Oh yeah, because obviously this yeah with the sort of like seventies sort of aesthetic as well with all the music and yeah yeah. Yeah, they could definitely lead into that. Oh, I think that's funny. where it's going to be. But he said that they're going to introduce some new characters in that, some new Marvel characters in that particular um, show. So there's there's loads of rumours about who they're going to be and stuff like that. I think Father Christmas is going to be one because obviously he's <laughs> a, technically a Marvel. He's like a mutant yeah, so in the weird. comics, yeah, isn't yeah. he? He's that, so I think that he's going to appear in one of them. Um, but there's so much potential with the Guardians and the cosmic kind of universe. They really could just bring in like so many different characters. Was and Adam there... Warlock is sat in his little leg. 
still. Oh, did you, did you see uh, James Gunn's picture on April Fool's Day? Oh, no. <laughs> did he put one uh, he put, well, he, he put up a picture and he said, oh, I tried to get a picture of Adam Warlock, uh, Adam yeah. Warlock um, but I dropped my camera. And it's literally <laughs> a blurred... <laughs> you know, blurred kind of thing as if he's dropped it and there's you can kind of see the color palettes so it is like i wouldn't actually put it past him that he has been stood next to the costume and he's kind of done that with his phone and then uploaded it um right. so people are kind of picking it apart oh look at this color and this color and stuff so um but that's that's another example <laughs> so, um there is lots to look forward to there is lots, <laughs> lots to look forward to uh have you seen morbius yet no after hearing all the things about it, I'll, I'll go see it eventually, but I'm not in a great rush now. No, I I'm really gutted. I'm really gutted. I've I've now I know the I've, now I know the post credit as well and where it's going to sit in a timeline and what they're doing and where they're clearly going with it. I'm just, I'll watch it when I get around to it. It's not MCU anymore. No, That's the it's thing. it's a shame. It, it is, is a shame. as soon as the, as soon as they get rid of that moniker of the like it's not MCU, it's Sony. They're gonna have yeah. that. They're gonna have that all the way through there. Their front, their like thing, their franchise. Everyone's gonna constantly go, "Oh, it's not an MCU film." Yeah, it's yeah. Sony universe film. They should have. They should never have said that. They should have kept it that this is a Marvel movie, the MCU. They should never have separated them. No, it's yeah, and I, I don't know it's how it's got to too feel confusing it. and weird now. It's got too, or it's like too confusing now as to where that yeah. all sits. It's, it's almost like. Because obviously they do run as as separate studios, and Sony isn't going to let go of the Spider Man stuff anytime soon. No. But it's almost like they took something that happened in the film and trying to build a universe around it. Yeah. Because you know that whole, you know, and Morbius yeah. isn't in the Sinister Six. No. It doesn't make sense. They're clearly building. Uh, the way they were, they were, they were clearly building to a Sinister Six storyline. And now they've mm. dropped the ball again and thrown Morbius into the mix. Like, what are you doing? I, I was I was hoping beyond hope that Morbius was going to tie into Blade and Moon Knight and because he belongs yeah. in that like Night Stalker universe with uh, Hannibal King and Blade and uh, Whistler yeah. and he belongs in that universe technically. If think if they'd have done that, that would yeah. be so much better. It's it's a difficult one. It is a difficult one. Um, I saw on some of the uh, Jade Letter interviews that he was saying that team like coming face to face with Spider-Man is inevitable and it's going to happen mm. at some point. And, you know, and that's interesting to hear, but I don't know. I, I, I'm really fearful for where the mm. Spider-Man element of movies are going to go. And considering we're kind of now we've had the trilogy, we've had the crossovers with the MCU, potentially what they do from here could really like ruin the character cinematically. I don't think the level. I don't. I, I've got a feeling they're going to build around. I still think they're going to build around Andrew Garfield. I don't think they're going to build around. Uh, what do you call him? Uh, Tom Holland. Tom Holland. I think Tom Holland will remain the MCU Spider Man, and that he'll just remain in Kevin Feige's back pocket to make another film in the future. I think they will. I think they will use um, somebody like Andrew Garfield, who's just had the big pop of the movie. He's still kind of young enough to do it. And the, if it goes wrong, it doesn't then go wrong for Tom Holland. It doesn't ruin the MCU and doesn't upset yeah. Kevin Feige. Because <laughs> that's the thing. It doesn't upset Marvel. If they just, yeah. they're experimenting, well, we'll experiment with this Spider-Man. Then if it goes wrong, we don't have to worry about it. Because yeah. they've got, they're already 10 years in with this, with the MCU. They can't go tit, tits up at the MCU right now. It needs to stay on course. So yeah. for me, having the Sony-verse with its own little Spider-Man, but a Spider-Man we're familiar with, mm -hmm. I think that should be enough to carry it. And I think I think his his Spider Man is dark enough to fit in that world with like your Venoms and your Morbiuses and he's already yeah. gone through like the trauma of losing Gwen Stacy and I think that could be like his darker Spider Verse. Do you not find it interesting how they removed all the Spider Man references in the Morbius film? I've I've not seen the film, so I've got no idea. But uh, have they removed all the references to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it. In the trailer, yet. there was all the like in the trailer there was all the. Uh, yeah. murderer signs and things like that they've got rid of all Oz, that Oscorp the murderer the Daily oh, Bugle yeah. that's all been removed so all of the stuff that we saw in the trailer that referenced Spider-Man isn't actually in the film so it was almost like a massive trolling that they kind of showed us all this stuff in the trailer and then it's not actually in the film so oh, no. yeah that's and I haven't not seen right. it that's only me based on 
you know reading reviews and stuff like that but that was one of the biggest uh points yeah and for, for me i was hoping that we were going to see i think i think as i think i said this a little while ago when they made the whole thing about like black cat the re, like the references to black cat and stuff mm-hmm. again again against tom holland it would be weird to have black cat like the yeah. way she is with Spider-Man, it would be weird in that universe with Tom Holland. He's too young. Yeah, and they couldn't really have a younger version of it because it just that that again would be odd. So I think again it would fit in with the with the uh, Andrew Garfield side because that is maturer. He's the mature yeah. Spider-Man. You could get away with a, a Black Cat storyline there. Yeah. See the Black Cat, um, the 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 Black Cat storyline for me in the comic books is one of my favorite favorite kind of angles and even Mm. how they did it in the computer games as well because it was this i don't know the idea of having this kind of alter ego is in peter parker has spider-man and him having this this love interest that is only you know she's in love with his alter ego she's not in love with peter parker she's in love with him um there was something really interesting about that and it was kind of you know yes there's the element of cheating and you know you've got your girlfriend or your wife depending when you're reading it in the comic books but having this what well, is it is it cheating because it's technically peter parker's with the black cat not you know mm. peter parker with felicia um and i always found it really interesting and I, I wouldn't want them to see i wouldn't want to see them do that too young mm. as you say I'd, I'd want them to see them do that with a more mature spider-man um can you imagine going back to an, like an Andrew Garfield Spider Verse now? And the first, like in the first movie, we're introduced to a, his universe as MJ, and obviously then he can we can cut back to the whole story about MJ in the in the Spider in the Spider Man movie with Tom Holland and stuff, and like they went, when they're talking about meeting his MJ, and yeah. he finally gets that girlfriend kind of thing, gets over Gwen Stacy, and then they could introduce Black Cat and throw her into the mix and have a little love triangle going on. Yeah, you know what though? Just thinking about it, now you mentioned that. If you were Andrew Garfield and you were in that nowhere home and you met two versions of yourself from all the universes and then the love of their lives were both called Mary Jane. <laughs> and then you went back to your universe. You'd be like, well, this is easy. I've just got to find this Mary Jane yeah. person. And that's the love of my life. Like, forget about this Gwen. Like this, I've just got to find this MJ. Like that's, that's a really, I hadn't thought about that like that before, but essentially he's been told who, who to find. Mm. That's, that's, his, that's, that's your that's your love interest. I'd love to see Andrew Garfield return. I really would. I'd love to see him return as a as Spider Man and and take on that more, more mature kind of story was, arc. People have done this thing now where they've kind of they've forgiven the movies and they've kind of gone, he's my favorite Spider Man and all that. Oh, so I they, know. There's enough. I there's know. enough. There's enough love there for the for the studios to go green light. And just do it. Yeah. There's enough you love see, there right now to do it. Did you see the uh, the uh, Peter? Peter number three trailer that they released for, <laughs> excuse me. So they, they totally trolled us, totally trolled us. They basically <laughs> created an amazing Spider-Man three esque trailer mm. that to advertise no way home coming out on Blu-ray and DVD. So it showed you clips of amazing Spider-Man one, amazing Spider-Man two. It had all the, the text over the top, like in the oh, same nice. Andrew Garfield kind of, um thing it then showed you clips of no way home and then it said like the amazing peter hashtag three like number three and then the the advert for the no way home now on digital download and stuff like that and i just thought it just goes to show how how far we've come because once amazing spider-man 2 was finished if you had done anything it would have just tanked whereas now you can advertise a completely other film in the style of the films that people used to hate. So yeah, it's, but I would like to see it. And I think you're right. I think that, you know, he's got enough credibility now as Spider-Man because he, he was the standout character in that he film, like, without a doubt. And I think that says a lot when you look at the caliber of the talent that was involved in that film, mm-hmm. as well as the, the, the roster of characters that were involved for, for one individual to be talked about more than any of the others and become such a fan favorite, they'd be stupid not to, surely. Mm-hmm. They'd be stupid not to. And like you say, even if it's just for one film and they they time jump 10 years and you see this more mature Peter Parker, more mature Spider-Man, you get your Felicia Hardy, yeah, it'd be brilliant. 
He'd be see, brilliant. I, see, I see it. I see it literally picking up from where <clears throat> where No Way Home left off. I literally see. I could see them starting the film with the portal and him walking through back into his universe. And like, just where do I go from here? How yeah. do I? I've just met two other versions of myself. I've saved the world. Now what? Yeah. Where now do I, I go, go from go. here? Yeah. Oh, it'd just be amazing. It really would be amazing. <laughs> and uh, obviously, I, I need to pick it up. I didn't want to watch it on digital download. I wanted to get the actual physical. Yeah, I'm waiting for yeah, I want to get the physical Blu-ray. It's not long now, is it? It's a couple of weeks. Uh, it's like a week away, isn't it? Oh, is it really that close? I think so, because that and Scream comes out on the same day, because I was really excited. Uh, <laughs> I was, it's, there you go. It's Monday week then, because Scream comes out not this, not tomorrow, uh, not this it's 11th. Monday. I think it's the 11th, because this week so is, week. The, is the Skywalker Lego video game. So yep. that, that comes out this week. So next week will be the Spider-Man release along with Scream yeah. and all the other good films that come out. Um, I still haven't seen Scream, so no spoilers, please. Um, one of my oh, best so friends. I got on my... I don't think I told you this story last week. I'm not sure. I literally got trolled on my Virgin Holidays flight. I was I was sat there and it, I was flicking through the films and it come up, Scream, with the five on the S and like, ooh. And it said, you know, Go back to Woodsboro and you know the the final conclusion of the epic saga of Scream. And I was like, oh, yeah. get in, I've not seen this film, clicked it. And it was Scream One, but I'm sat there going, sort of thinking to myself, maybe they're just recapping or something. Maybe it's gonna cut to something <laughs> new in a minute. And then I ended up sitting there for 25 minutes. I'm like, nope, this is Scream One. <laughs> I still sat and watched it. I still left it on. I sat and watched the whole film. But yeah, you're like, oh my god, this I literally got trolled by Virgin. <laughs> I have a loads of wrong film, clearly. One of my uh, one of my best friends, like we're massive Scream fans, and mm. obviously because the time it came out, I made the decision not to go to the cinema, and then I've stayed away from all the spoilers, and I have, I have no to. idea, I have no idea. So I'm really looking forward. So he's picking it up <laughs> Monday week, and then we're going to watch it, and I'm really excited, really excited for that. I can't wait. Um, did you catch the? Uh, have you seen the bubble yet on Netflix? No, I need to watch that though. That looks hilarious. It's yeah, it's a it's a trip. It's a it's a <laughs> though, uh, it's got film. one hell of a cast attached to it. It's a really big cast, but they're, yeah. they're just brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. And it's yeah, it's just a lot of fun. And it's I, I, I don't even know how to to group it. It's it's a very much kind of that type of film, you know. It's it, it's a, a Judd Apto a Judd no, film, isn't it? yeah. film. It's you know that's that's the category in itself. And uh yeah I started watching it the other night and it's just really funny and it's it's just the the scenes that you kind of see the film and then without missing a beat it cuts and they're on the green screen and stuff. And it's just it's just awesome. It's, it's just like, dudes in costume. <laughs> yeah it's just and so current as well because obviously talking about pandemic and bubbles and all this kind of stuff and yeah it's just it's just a lot of fun and I need to go and watch the end. I just ran out of time last night so I was like no I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it because I don't want to half ass it and I don't, <laughs> you know watch it kind of through through my you know through one eye while I'm falling asleep. Um have you been watching Walking Dead at all? You're a Walking Dead fan? I fell off with Walking Dead years ago, I'm going to admit. Um, I think I stopped watching about season four or five. <clears throat> it's really hard. It's really difficult. I've, I've stuck got, with it. I think we got... Well, where did I get up to? Is it? Is there a place called Alexandria or something? Or like the place where you yeah, meet... Yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the place where you meet the guy with the, the baseball bat. Where they killed Glenn. Negan. Where they killed Negan. Glenn. Oh, yeah. They killed Glenn, and that was where I got up to. Like, as soon as it went from like, we're gonna find a place, we're gonna stay here for a while. Oh, it was on this attack, let's move on. As soon yeah. as that, as soon as you got into that rhythm, I'm like, no, this is boring. It's it's really difficult. I think the problem is, is considering I, I read all the comic books, so I was a mm. massive fan of the comic books, but naturally they the, the show and the comic books kind of get to a point and then they really kind of go in different directions. But the TV show is still trying to stay in line with certain mm. things. So there's a there's another group called the Commonwealth, which uh, is, you know they feature quite heavily towards the end of the comic book run, and that's where we are now with the TV show. But there's so many storylines that are going on that are nothing to do with the TV show that you're kind of like, okay, I recognise what you're talking about because of the comic <laughs> books, but this isn't an alternate storyline I needed or, or wanted. I just uh, if if they just stuck to the comic book and just followed it, they could have had a solid, solid eleven series. But they've they've 
strayed off too far. Um, but they have announced a spin-off, another spin-off. Um, so they're going to do a Negan and Maggie, which is obviously <laughs> the guy that killed Glenn and Glenn's wife. So there's yeah. a spin-off with those two. Um, and I don't think they're going to be retiring and buying a farm together. I think it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be an interesting one. But yeah, there's there's a couple of spin-offs coming, but that's the first one that's been announced. So yeah, but it is hard work. But that comes out every Monday on Disney Plus, and it's one in ones. Uh, the episode oh, comes Disney up on my. Oh, just, I know. Sorry, just hearing the words Disney Plus and walking dead in the same sentence. Oh, it's nuts! Blowing. It's nuts. And and the strange thing is as well is over in America. There's been such a kickoff because of the Defenders going on Disney Plus and how mm. the Punisher doesn't fit with the Disney brand and you know how you've got to do this and then you've got English like sort of content creators going just just for your information over here we've got Deadpool we've got The Walking Dead we've got like and listing all these really mature content things that we've had on Disney Plus for for ages now um but yeah when I when I found out Disney Plus was having The Walking Dead I was like this is great but it's really weird really really yeah. weird people forget though obviously over the years Disney have uh, had other distribution labels that they used to disguise that it was Disney, like to, like Touchstone Cinemas was Disney. Yeah, uh, they've, they've, they've always had like other brand names that they used, so they didn't have to stick the mouse on the, on these really weird films. Yeah, and that's the thing is we've got the the star, haven't we? Star Play or Star, star whatever yeah. it is, and that's what a lot of this mature stuff kind of comes under on on that's Disney. Basically, it's basically Fox, isn't it? I think that's basically oh, what Fox has down. become. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, there's. And obviously, like uh, the American Horror Story is now on Disney Plus, which again is weird. Oh, I know um, that's that's really odd, considering how off like. And there's been the American Horror Story is like the spin-off show as well. Spin-off and show. And I was like, this is not Disney. Like, you're not going to see this in a Disney park. Like, <laughs> this is weird. This is weird. Um, but yeah, it's I don't know. And it, it just cracks me up that you know overseas, so many people were kicking off because of the Punisher. Um, but with that said, that Disney Plus have changed some of the scenes in certain TV shows. Yeah, so like, I saw that about Captain America. It was like is it the one where obviously bashes the guy's head in. They've changed it to be less yeah, graphic, like less graphic. And there's bits where like a, a, a steel rod sort of impales someone's shoulder, mm. and they've done it so that it just kind of flies past them now. And and I'm just kind of like, why are you doing all that? But then also show me Deadpool. But it's just like I think the plan on. is I think there was I read something about the it could could that not be future parental control? So like if your kid wants to watch this TV series but it's might may maybe a little bit too mature for them, we could show them the PG thirteen version because Deadpool did that if you remember they released Deadpool yeah. two and then they did the Deadpool Christmas special which is basically yeah. the same film but with bleeps and but, the, yeah. the the proof that could cut certain things out and give it a PG thirteen rating without ruining what Deadpool is. Yeah. So I think maybe that's where they're going with it. They're trying to like appease parental control markets and all that kind of thing. Of you know, you can stick a market a thing on and your kid can still watch it. Yeah, that might be that might be a case. Because it's Captain America. At the end of the day, the kids want to watch it, but obviously that some of them scenes were too graphic. Yeah. Like, Jesus. Oh yeah, some of them were really. I mean, the the shield scene in itself was mm. just insane. You know. Um. Yeah. Maybe that is it. Maybe that is it. And obviously, we have got Deadpool three coming. So. You know where's that going to fit? How how PG thirteen is that going to be? You know, gonna is it going to be now that now that it's all under the one the one house? Disney are going to have fun with that film. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds is going to have a field day of references. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're out. We're going to have loads. Of, I think we'll have fake outs. Like they might hire Chris Evans, but he's not playing Captain America. He's just playing a coffee clerk in a Starbucks. Yeah, and Deadpool could just make quip after quip. Like, are you sure I'm worthy to live? I mean, like, you know, yeah. like it could be Thor or something. You know what I mean? Like, get get Chris Evans with this. Like, are you sure I'm worthy to lift this, lift this latte? The, the, we know be. what he's talking about, but they, you know, like, they just, you know I mean, they could do a lot of tongue in cheek stuff. Well, they did that in uh, in Free Guy, didn't they? With Chris yeah, Evans and the, did, yeah, yeah. Know, that was that that was really well done. But that, that if Deadpool was done that way, and it's the same director same director mm-hmm. so they could very very easily go down that route i think you might have hit that one ahead there i think that's mm-hmm. what they're going to do just because obviously they'll, i don't think they'll ever say that deadpool's in the same universe as the mcu i don't think that'll ever happen no. for obvious reasons but they can make so many fun comic book references out of it like the like like, like the thing they did with cog that was perfect oh it's brilliant yeah absolutely brilliant 
And can you imagine, we've been waiting for Hugh Jackman to appear on screen with Ryan Reynolds, you know, re reunited as Wolverine and Deadpool. Can you imagine if they did that as a fake out scene? And it, we got you know, Hugh Jackman's on the, he's sat in a bar at the thing and he's got the leather jacket on and he's sat there and Ryan Reynolds walks in and the guy, you know, G Hugh Jackman just completely ignores him and does his Australian accent. And yeah, uh, don't know what you're talking about, mate. He walks off like that would be yeah. amazing. Like, that would be guy. Really <laughs> that, would, that really would be good. That really, would. I think that's the angle they're going to go down it. But I think Deadpool Three is one of them films. I think I'm most excited about that in comparison to some of the other things because, yeah, because of because of the unknown. Like, how are they going to change it from what it was to what it needs to be? And where are they going to go with it? Obviously, we've done. They've kind of crammed everything into a, the second one because I don't. I don't think they were sure if they were going to get a third film. So they crammed <laughs> X Force and Cable into one film. Yeah. What's next for Deadpool? Where can they go next? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, you know, the the the, the storylines are so kind of vast, but. Yeah, I, I, talking, I don't even. We're talking. I don't even death, know. Shikler, yeah. Dracula. They could, do some, they could do some funny monster stuff, but I'm thinking that's that's the way, that's all they've got left to go, really, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's it. Like the wedding and everything like that. Perhaps I don't know. I really don't know. Or, the wedding would be fun to do. Are we going to see him finally team up with someone? <laughs> oh, like, is he going to be? Is he going to be a part of? Like, are they going to kind of reinvent the X Men because of you know the X Men? you know the x-men are coming at some point you know are we gonna are we gonna see something like that are the x-men gonna be announced by the time we get deadpool 3 and he joins them i, I don't know oh they could imagine if the film and the the, the red circle appears and deadpool's like i'm not touching that and I'm like, no no <laughs> way and on the other side of that is the end game scene going on and he's like nope not getting involved nope nope <laughs> he walks away or, from it and the, you, oh, you he does fans jump through. For it. He does jump through. He just goes off in a different direction. That literally he just just... into a different universe. I was going, like, what? Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just, or just actually goes through to the fight scene, but kind of behind them all, <laughs> and then just turns around and goes a different way and ends up on this whole, you know, how how are they going to bring him through? Because the thing is as well is that you look at the Deadpool films and how how much went on in there. For him to be part of the MCU, it'd be hard for him to be ignored. Like, where yeah. have they been? And it's almost that in joke of the X Men of that you know no one's ever here kind of thing. Mm. But the reality of you know all these MCU characters, like you, you couldn't yeah. have gone that long and not be not crossed over somehow. So, like they could have it like he's always one step behind. So he never quite catches up with them until the last minute. You know what I mean? Like they could do the whole film just doing quips about the whole MCU crossover. I'm finally in the movie, guys. They're like, where is everybody? And like, yeah. He just spends the whole film looking for them and then they're never there and all this kind of stuff. And he goes on his own little adventures in our in like the MCU universe. Turning up at locations off, it's all finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Like he turns up at the end game battle just as it's like finished and everyone's gone home and there's just yeah. dead bodies everywhere. <laughs> like, what is going on? That would be cool. That would be cool. All right, talking about crossovers as well, and having rewatched the Defenders series now that they're on Disney Plus, okay. I I really forgot just how much they reference the MCU. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so much reference to the MCU. It was um, meant to be in the MCU originally. It was it was all part of the MCU, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm I'm up to Iron Fist at the moment, so I've done Daredevil in chronological order. I've done Daredevil. Why are you one. doing that to yourself? <laughs> You know what? I'm I'm gonna defend it a little bit here because <laughs> I've done Daredevil one, Jessica Jones one, Daredevil two, Luke Cage, and that's like the 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 reading order if you like. And then mm. it's Iron Fist, and then it's Defenders. And having watched them all in short succession, Iron Fist isn't as bad as I remembered because of like the Colin Wing like crossovers and stuff. And <coughs> you see you see Claire kind of taking the the martial art dojo leaflet at the end of Luke Cage. And it's just, there's a lot of, and, and Claire referencing Daredevil and talking about Jessica Jones and stuff. And it's, it's all kind of, I don't know. I just, I, I see Iron Fist now as the bad episode of a good series. So yeah. it's like, I need to watch it because of the crossovers and stuff, but yeah, it's not, I was really dreading it. I was like, Oh, maybe I could get away with not watching it. I was like, no, I've got to go for it. 
And I started, I was like, actually, you know what? It's not as bad as I remembered. Not, not as bad. Still bad, but it's not as bad. <laughs> um, but it's really enjoyable. I'm, I'm really, and I've got Netflix and Disney Plus, so I've had access to them this whole time, but just never went back and rewatched them. But sort of seeing them there on Disney Plus, I'm like, yeah, this is my, this is what I'm watching now. This is where I'm going, um, and I'm committed. I'm going to watch the whole thing all, all in one go. Um, nice. have you got anything big coming this week or happening this week coming? Uh, I've got a big delivery coming this week from star action figures i've got a bunch of the new black series on the way nice. so i'll be doing i'll be i'll be up, up, up to my eyeballs in reviews this week is my plan see i'm really i'm really low, uh, short on the ground if that's the right saying i can't remember but um i've got one delivery i've got the ragnarok figure coming the, the thor ragnarok figure coming from comics and cocktails mm. but apart from that i've got nothing like nothing is out yet it's all so far in the future um, I've got a handful of the three and three quarter inch that I can look at because they came in a little while back. But yeah, apart from that Ragnarok figure. Yeah, they're doing this thing though, I've noticed with, with Black Series where they're saying like the Ahsoka and that wasn't meant to come until like they had like January 2023 as the, as the listing date for like for when it's meant to be in stock. But that's coming tomorrow. So I mean, that's mad. things are starting to arrive I think they did this thing where they've put things so far forward. We're all going, oh my God, well, what the hell's coming this year if that's all in the future? And I think these yeah. things are just going to come now. They just didn't want to put an estimate date on it because they didn't know when it was going to arrive. Because of everything no. going on with the, obviously like China's in lockdown again. So yeah. obviously all, all the factories are shut down that make the toys. So, mm. I mean, it's going to have a re like effect somewhere. So uh, well, I think they didn't want to have like a specific date and say, oh, it's all coming in April just to go, sorry guys, we couldn't deliver it or yeah. If they put it, if they put it all as it's coming next year and then deliver it this year, happy days. Yeah. It is difficult because I always I, I try to kind of you know balance out what I'm spending or what I'm, I'm receiving saying. and stuff. Mm. And so I, I have them with the dates that they're due to come out. And even like this Ragnarok figure, so okay, it's only a deluxe, it's not kind of stupid money, but it, it still wasn't due mm. out for another month. So you get mm. your invoice through and you're like, Well, hang on a sec, I wasn't budgeting for this, I wasn't planning for this at all. Um, so it is difficult, but at the same token, at least we're still, you know, getting our stuff, you know, our stuff's yeah. getting over to us, which is the main thing. I think that's going to be like the way it goes going forward. I think things are just going to drop randomly. Yeah. So how's your no pre-orders going? <laughs> fine. Absolutely fine. Do you know what? Yeah. Um, I, 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 I got, I got, I'm going to admit, it was our, our, our touch and go because uh, obviously Soka being one of my favorite cars on the planet. And everyone was like getting their pre-orders through. And I'm like, eh, no one's got it in stock. What have I done to myself? I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> and then suddenly Star Action figures are like, we've got some Ahsokas. Like, yes. So nice. still going strong with the no pre-orders. I've not pre-ordered anything. That's not interesting. Even, not even that TVC um, set in the end. They are the, the Jabba's Palace. Yeah. I decided, decided not to pre-order. And if it's available, it's available. If it's not, it's not. I couldn't. I was sat there going, am I really going to pre-order this a year and a half in advance? Like, no, I'm not. Yeah. We'll wait yeah. to see what happens with it. Especially with the price tag that it came with as well. It was mm. like a hefty price tag. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if that one comes to fruition or not. Um, I think even Ryan pre-ordered that. I think yeah. even, even he went down that line and, and put in a pre-order with that. Um, but that is the one good thing about Pulse for, for anyone that doesn't use pulse is that you know there's no debit is there's no deposit mm. but you secure that figure so that when it comes to it you then get your email alert and oh you've pre-ordered this if you want it then this is how much you owe us but i think that's a really and, and obviously the the smaller retailers couldn't do it like that because of obviously getting stock in and stuff but it's nice yeah. to see that that's how hasbro doing it because they very easily could have gone down the same route of pre-order and pay know, deposit and all that yeah. five five percent deposit or something like yeah. that there is one deposit that has completely disappeared into the wind for me though. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to name or shame um, e-tailers or whatever, because I'm yeah, not yeah. overly fussed, but there was a, before we got the what if wave with the, yeah. the watcher builder figure, uh, the diamond select watcher came back up. Do you remember? Yeah. There was a... I, I've got him on pre-orders. He's one of my outstanding pre-orders yeah. from when I was pre-ordering and yeah, he's still outstanding, isn't he? They were due in October last yeah. year so and i'm just kind of like okay it's only a, it's a couple of quid so i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna 
kick up a fuss or anything like that and if it comes out it comes out but we're now kind of six months past the due date and there's been no mention of where it is um and obviously so many people went for it because it was one of these diamond select figures that everybody wanted and it carried quite a a high aftermarket yeah. price didn't it it's about 100 quid um mm-hmm. and yeah so so many people have pre-ordered it so there's, there's a decent amount of money there sitting in pre-orders like pre-order deposits that is what six months past yeah. past the, the the estimated date but i oh know it's interesting to know that you've got it as well that you've got it on pre-order somewhere yeah, it's as well. on pre-order. <laughs> and the thing is nobody's got one so it's not like it's not like there's a specific, a specific e-tailer that's not getting stock nobody's no. got them as far as i'm no, aware no. it just hasn't come out yet from diamond so no still waiting on and that that's one. that's maybe one of the main drop, reasons maybe it'll drop soon along with moon Knight. maybe a few will drop at once yeah Maybe. Do you, like, do you remember like back in the day when the Disney store used to get them and we we had like, I think they dropped like, um, there was like the Hydra Captain America, I think, or something. And then there was like the, um, with like with Black Black Widow with the little Ant-Man and stuff. They dropped yes, like yeah, two yeah, or yeah. three like together in Disney store and the Black Panther yeah. one. Yeah. They dropped like three at once. I wonder if it was something like that where we'll see the Watcher and the new Moon Knight figure and something else on the shelf. I must admit, one shop that I miss having a physical shop to go into is the Disney yeah. store. Because yeah. we had a we had a pop-up store here and it was only supposed to be it popped up before Christmas. So it like kind of just essentially just filled a an empty unit and they put the Disney store logo out the front. And then everyone assumed it was just here until Christmas because of the run it run up to Christmas. And a couple of months after Christmas, it's still here, but they've now got window kind of decals and stuff. Um and it was here for a few years, like a good few years. But I used to go there probably daily just to see what the new things were that they brought out yeah. and that, what was on offer and stuff like that. And yeah, it's gone now. And I really do miss the uh, the physical brick and mortar Disney store to go into. Disney store did this a long time ago, though. They did this back in the 90s where the, they had the classic Disney store with all the animatronics, the things around the roof. And they were so they were, they were made to look like the stores from Orlando and stuff. They were made to yeah. look like disney stars they had they had the the donald duck jumping out of the like trombone on the ceiling and stuff like that yeah, yeah. and them stars slowly died off and they got rid of them in the 90s and then suddenly those hanger stars that we had that have just shut they all came into play with that white like blue floor and the white ceilings and the stupid yeah. ball things running around the roof so i mean they i could see them coming back marvel and yeah. star wars come on They've got two so. of the world's biggest franchises under their belt, and then they haven't got a physical star to sell them in. I could I see know. them doing it. I know. Fingers Even crossed. Even if it's, um, I could because just like the London store when they when they re, when they kind of revamped that and they gave that upstairs bit the collectors room. Mm. I think I said before when Disney's our first show, I could imagine them revamping all the stores to that basically. Yeah. And just no longer stocking the usual Disney dolls and merchandise that that'll stay online although you can have it delivered to store or something like that and then it'll the, sh- the shops will be just full of your funkos and your marvel legends black series uh your high-end collectibles your hot toys and they could yeah. make a big star like that to try and rival obviously what hmv are doing and things like that yeah you essentially need like a new forbidden planet like it's like mm-hmm. a, a a different version and if that was run by disney oh, it'd be powerful Hasbro have got. I, I'm still surprised we don't have Hasbro stores. They've got enough oh. content under their belt to make. A oh, shop. I know, I know. Can you imagine? And you imagine if they pulled all of their products from certain Smiths and things. Yeah, like yeah. Smiths. If Smiths lost the Hasbro contract because Jeez. Hasbro are opening those their own stores, and maybe still give it to the smaller stores and stuff like that, because what they would stock would be very limited in comparison. But you then had like a Hasbro mega store in like your. Your lakesides and stuff like that. It yeah, would your be Manchester's, your Leeds, your London, your, yeah, yeah. your big cities, Edinburgh's. It'd be insane. Yeah. It'd be insane. I'd shop there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just like... And they could probably mark stuff up higher and it would still sell. That's the sad thing, is that they could mm. they could add a quid to everything and it would still sell. But one thing to ask you before before, before we wrap up. Um, did you ever get the Captain America? Sorry, a uh, Captain Carter stealth suit one? No. No, no, that's, it didn't... that's I realized that that's in stock now with comics and cocktails. Yeah. Is it import stock or is it 
actual stock? Um, target exclusive, it just says target exclusive stock, 26.99. It's in stock right now. It's not sold no, out, right. it's just sat there. And I'm like, I haven't seen any reviews from any of the UK guys on that yet. Obviously, yeah. I don't collect anymore. I was like, hmm, no one's the review I, um, on that one. Yeah, I might, I might go and purchase that. I'm, I'm looking for a new figure to review. <laughs> um, but no, I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of really wanted it. And then mm. obviously the guys over in the States all got it and looked at it and whatnot. And then we had no sniff at getting it at all. And then it kind of came and went. But I have a feeling that if she is in Multiverse of Madness, yeah, I'm getting you figure anyway. it's worth, but I think it's probably worth picking this one up because like of everything, I mean, the amount of Moon Knight merchandise that I've seen on the groups trying to be sold for yeah. high ticket prices from comic <laughs> books to statues to everything. Where, where was all this Moon Knight merchandise like two weeks ago? Like it's, yeah. I swear some people just buy stuff, sit on it and wait, oh, wait yeah. until the show drops. It's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. But um, no, we'll call it there then. I think that's the, that's a decent, yeah. it's been a bit of a, been a bit all over week this week. It's been like having a look at everything. But um, without a doubt, we'll obviously have Moon Knight episode two to take a look at next week. Uh, and I've got a feeling we've got the Star Wars uh, Wednesday. So we'll have a handful of new figures to talk about there. And I have a feeling we'll probably see a few more drops as well throughout the week. We're getting into kind of hot season now, aren't we? It's, yeah. you know, it's the time that, that stuff's going to start happening. Um, so obviously, if you are still watching, then please do like, share, subscribe and all of those things. Um, check the description. Give the gents a follow if you don't already do so. Check us out on Instagram and on Facebook. And if you're on podcast, then please do continue to download, listen and share because it's very much appreciated. Um, but yeah, if that's everything, I think it's about time we say that famous, famous last words because <laughs> I'm going to claim them as famous now. Um, but yeah, until next week. Keep it geek. The Geek Week in Review.